Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 78th installment of our Milestones Anthology on the History of Technology and Space Exploration, and our seventh segment on the SpaceX Starship Interplanetary Spacecraft Program, and more specifically, the serial number 11 suborbital flight in the new spacecraft's full main stage configuration. On a foggy March 30th, 2021, the Starship serial number 11 spacecraft was launched about six to seven miles in altitude were about the same as the serial number 8, 9, and 10 prototypes reached on December 9th, 2020, February 2nd, 2021, and March 3rd, 2021. The craft is the fourth to feature flaps and a nose cone. Serial number 11 follows its predecessors, serial numbers 5 through 9, except 7, and the Starhopper, which have successfully completed hops at various heights along with controlled landings. The flight was originally scheduled for the 29th, but an FAA safety inspector was not able to get to Boca Chica in time. The FAA modified SpaceX's launch license to require an FAA safety inspector to be at Boca Chica for the tests. It is not clear what the FAA inspector will actually do at the launch site. The serial number 11 flight was the first in overcast and foggy weather, which limited the available video from several third-party channels that had been broadcasting activities of SpaceX's Boca Chica, Texas Starbase. Starbase is the name that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has christened the South Texas Company facility. The facilities currently only contain engineering and assembly buildings, test stands, landing pads, fuel storage, and an inactive natural gas field with several wells. SpaceX hopes to build a complete set of launch complexes like those at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, assuming it can get the necessary permits from the FAA and the state of Texas as well as weather the inevitable legal challenges from agitators. Like with the previous fully configured chassis, serial number 11 used three Raptor engines to launch the 130-ton rocket. All three engines fired at liftoff, with each shutting down in succession to halt its ascent. The Raptor engines are designed specifically for the Starship. It is anticipated that production of Starships will use six Raptor engines. It is hoped that Starship will operate as a single-stage spacecraft when lifting from the Moon or Mars. It will use a booster when lifting from Earth. The serial number 11 launch is the next action in a series of tests on a Starship design, with several previous static prototypes during ground tests and three full-size craft during flight being destroyed in a learning process of trial and error. Let's watch the serial number 11 flight in real time. In the fog is SpaceX's Starship test vehicle number 11. It was just over three weeks ago we launched number 10 from the adjacent pad at the Starbase facility in Cameron County, Texas. For today's test, we are counting down to launch of Starship number 11 to a 10 kilometer altitude. Now, as with our last test, today's flight is to gather data on using flaps to control Starship as it descends back to the landing pad before lighting its Raptor engines for touchdown. Now we're going to do our best to find a camera view for the webcast, but as you can see, fog is everywhere at Starbase in Texas. With T minus 42 seconds, we're counting down. We are retracting the quick disconnect from the vehicle in preparation for launch in just over 30 seconds from now. T minus 30 seconds. Good prevail cycles. Ten, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. plus 33 seconds. Starship test vehicle number 11 ascending over Starbase in South Texas. One kilometer altitude. We 
you've heard the call out, we're over one kilometer up. Views from the external camera on Starship number 11 looking back towards the Starbase facility in the fog in South Texas. Four kilometers altitude. T plus two minutes, we're getting ready to shut down the first of the three Raptor engines. T plus two minutes, 21 seconds. You can see we have shut down the first of the three engines on time as planned. T plus three minutes, continuing to climb on power of two engines. We're past eight kilometers. T plus three and a half minutes. You can see with the camera view, we have shut down the second of the three engines as planned. We're now slowly climbing to the final 10 kilometer altitude on the power of the single Raptor engine. Once we're at Apogee, we'll hover shortly, shut down the engine as we flip over and then descend back towards the landing pad at Starbase. 10 kilometers altitude. Coming up at T plus four minutes, we're at 10 kilometers altitude, and we are getting dropouts on the camera, but we continue to get telemetry from the Starbase, from the Starship vehicle. While we're waiting to reestablish video connection with the vehicle, we have shut down the third of the three Raptor engines as planned. We're now beginning the horizontal maneuver back down to the landing pad at the Starbase facilities. As we get close to land, we will ignite the three Raptor engines, flip to vertical, and then land on the thrust of a single Raptor engine. T plus 4 minutes, 40 seconds and counting, and it looks like we've got some camera views back again. Six kilometers altitude. T plus five minutes, we're passing through five kilometers. A nice view from the exterior camera showing one of the flaps on the Downrange Starship test Control vehicle Airport number 11. Two kilometers altitude. One kilometer altitude. T 
T plus 545, we've just passed through one kilometer altitude, getting ready for the relay. We're back with you. As you can see from the uh, frozen camera view, uh, we lost the clock at T plus 5 minutes 49 seconds. Looks like we've had another exciting test of Starship number 11. A reminder again, this is a test series to gather data on entry of the Starship vehicle uh, at subsonic speeds as it comes back to the landing zone. It does appear though that uh, another exciting test as we say uh, we don't have any good camera views to share with you right now, so with that, we are going to bring the webcast to a close. Uh, we, a quick recap, we had the nominal ascent, we maneuvered the horizontal when we got to 10 kilometers. The entry, we had some nice views from the exterior camera showing uh, the flaps were quiet as we descended. But then we had the camera freeze up as we got into the engine ignition sequence, and so we're going to have to find out from the team what happened. But with that... We'd like to thank the team and bring the webcast to a close, and we'll be back with you with Starship, the next Starship test in the near future. At 4 minutes and 20 seconds from launch, serial number 11 throttled down and then shut off the last remaining lit engine, reorienting the craft for its return glide. At T plus 5 minutes and 48 seconds, all three engines were then reignited in preparation for landing. Onboard video was lost one second after ignition, and seconds after ignition there was a loud boom on the audio. There was no video following the sound. 88 seconds after the termination of video, SpaceX's MC broke in to terminate the broadcast and announced the loss of the craft. The loud sound probably indicated the activation of serial number 11's flight termination system. The Starship prototypes at this stage of development feature a flight termination system that would be engaged in the event the spacecraft veers away from the target landing area presenting a possible danger to civilian areas. The FTS was not required for any of the previous prototypes, which even during failure landed directly on the ground pad. Musk said afterwards, quote, Looks like engine two had issues on ascent and didn't reach operating chamber pressure during landing burn. But in theory, it wasn't needed. Something significant happened shortly after landing burn start. Should know what it was once we can examine the bits later today. SpaceX is iterating towards a final version of Starship that Musk has said will be capable of carrying up to 100 people to the moon, Mars, and other distant destinations. The 165-foot tall Starship will launch from Earth atop a first-stage booster known as a Super Heavy, which will be powered by two and a half dozen Raptors of its own. The Starship vehicle will be powerful enough to blast itself off the moon and Mars, whose gravitational poles are much weaker than that of our planet, Musk has said. Both Starship and the forthcoming Super Heavy are designed to be fully and rapidly reusable, a technological breakthrough that SpaceX believes will make ambitious exploration feats, such as Mars colonization, economically feasible. Starship will fly a wide variety of missions to many different destinations, if all goes according to plan. SpaceX plans to phase out all of its other spaceflight hardware over time, handing all duties over to Starship and its Super Heavy booster. Musk previously said the lifetime of each Starship will be around 20 to 30 years, like an aircraft. Around three Starship flights will launch from Earth per day, or around 1,000 flights a year, and each will have a capacity of more than 90,000 pounds, according to the billionaire. By continuously ferrying the people the 180 million miles to Mars, Musk is predicting 1,000 human inhabitants by 2030, and maybe around 1 million by 2050. SpaceX is currently pursuing a launch license for full-scale, orbital-class Starship Super Heavy vehicles. Musk hopes the spacecraft will be lifted to low Earth orbit by 2021 and have people inside of it by the end of 2022. This would hopefully be followed by a cargo mission to Mars in that same year, return NASA astronauts to the lunar surface in 2024, and even begin sending people to Mars the same year. SpaceX has already booked one Starship customer, Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa, who will fly around the moon on the vehicle with several other hand-picked passengers. The target date for that mission is 2023, with the crew roster being settled by the end of 2021. Starship is also in the running to land NASA astronauts on the moon as part of the Space Agency's Artemis program. 
The Trump administration aimed to put two astronauts down near the lunar south pole in 2024 and establish a sustainable human presence on around the moon by the end of the decade. The Biden administration has indicated that timetable is too aggressive, and NASA put on hold in February of 2021 the contract award for a new lunar lander. In the meantime, work continues unabated on the Starship development program. Serial number 15 is nearing full assembly, as is serial number 16. It is not clear what differentiates serial numbers 15 and 16 from serial number 11. Serial numbers 12 to 14 were scrapped after the serial number 9 launch, indicating that some significant engineering aspect was discovered during the serial number 8 and serial number 9 tests, something that could not be implemented in holes too far into their construction. Two holes for the Super Heavy Booster, BN1 and BN2, are also currently under construction at SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site, with BN1 nearing full assembly. SpaceX has not yet announced when a Super Heavy Booster will undergo static fire tests, which is undoubtedly the first step still needed to be undertaken for the new rocket. What do you think about SpaceX's Starship Commercial Interplanetary Spacecraft Development Program? Do you think that SpaceX's fourth straight failure of a prototype during flight or landing will delay an orbital flight until 2022? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this 78th installment of Blade Tech's Milestone series. If so, click that like button. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 200 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our micro blogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. And finally, join us on our Facebook and Minds pages, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.